Hello, salutations, thanks for stopping by, thanks for joining. If this is your first time here, glad to have ya. Uh, last episode we were drawing Jimmy Neutron characters in all of their glory, and in the spirit of continuing down the Nickelodeon line of characters, we are going to hop on over to Spongebob, uh, and I've decided to start the episode off with the, the cheery little sponge himself, uh, Spongebob in all of his glory. Uh, and here he is, the hard working class sea sponge that just doesn't know what else to do with his time aside from annoy his neighbor, go into uh, some weird na nautical ventures under the sea, and to do his duty at the Krusty Krab, and uh, just do his job to the fullest. Unfortunately, uh, SpongeBob here is in, in dire straits. He's not looking too good. Uh, despite that cheery grin, he is masking horrendous pain and you know, he can only hold that smile for so long before it turns into a grimace. Uh, I'll run through the, uh, the issues SpongeBob's dealing with today. Uh, while going to the, uh, the Krusty Krab for his, his Monday morning shift, uh, Mr. Krabs put him immediately on toilet duty. And uh, those toilets were full to the brim. And let me tell you, not much of what he found inside was solid. So, while plunging away, Got a little bit of that dookie duke up in his eye. He's got some pink eye going on. It's probably not going to clear up for a while. So hopefully he can get some medication on that. Uh, and after uh, cleaning those bathrooms and Mr. Krabs not giving him ample time to wash his hands, uh, he immediately began frying burgers for the day. Now unfortunately, SpongeBob does work 20 hour shifts. He only gets four hours of sleep. So while standing at the grill, he did unfortunately develop uh, two blood clots in both his his left arm and left leg, uh, which unfortunately are likely going to cause him to have cardiac issues uh, later that day, uh, unless he gets medical attention. But Mr. Krabs does not offer medical care or insurance, so SpongeBob will likely perish if he does not get help soon. But despite everything else going on with him today, he's still got that smile, he's still got that grin, and he's still ready to flip them patties for you. So, let's move on. Let's continue drawing the cheery cast of, of those crazy sea-dwelling characters today. And I think today, uh, we'll follow up SpongeBob with his best friend, uh, Patrick. Patrick Starr. Now, Patrick's a, uh, he's a quirky fellow. Not the brightest. Uh, one could say he's even, uh, completely and utterly incompetent. A uh, stupid caveman, a troglodyte. All of which is correct. Uh, but what he makes up for with his lack of IQ points, he makes up for with passion. Uh, now we just gotta, gotta draw his face here. Uh, Patrick's a pretty cheery, cheery, jolly fella, you know. He's always willing to help SpongeBob out in a bind. That's what I like about him, you know. He's selfless. He's always willing to help his buddy out. Even if he doesn't fully understand what's going on. That's what you gotta like about him. Give him his eyes there. There we go, he's got his little, his little pupils, he's focused, he's ready. There he is. Uh, he doesn't really have much of a nose. We'll just say that's kind of his nose right there. He's kind of got a hunch going on. He's got his little point. Uh, give him his ton here. I guess he doesn't really have teeth though. You know, he's kind of got a, a toothless grin like an infant baby. Uh, which I guess kind of explains uh, a lot of his personality, you know, he is, he's just kind of a, a stupid dumb baby. Uh, but despite, you know, him not being the brightest, he'll still help Spongebob any way he can. Uh, and if you're willing to tolerate his shenanigans, uh, you might have a good time with him. Uh, he's kind of a husky fellow, so we're going to make him just kind of chilling out in his backyard. Uh, he's, give him his, his, little, his little triangle arms, he just kind of has him resting on his... His tum tum. He just had a, a big old bowl of of bacon bits and potatoes. So he's he's pretty full right now. Of course he's uh you know in his classic little green shorts down here. Cause you can't have Patrick without his classic attire. Uh, there we go. And he's kind of a pink. You know Patrick's a pink fella. Don't let you, don't let that fool you. You know he's tough when he needs to be tough. So, you know if you ever, if you're ever in a bind, feel free to call on Patrick because I'll help you out. 
Now, I don't know how much hopeful he'll be, but he'll be there. And, uh, you know, he hasn't slept in a little while. He's a little, he's a little tired. And we gotta give him his little belly. There we go. Look at that. Guess we should give him, uh, his nips. They're a little big. He's got some pepperoni nips, but that's okay. You know, he's a, he's a bit blobby. He's a bit misshapen, but he's strong. He's got a strong heart. And he's, uh, he's got a strong emotional emotional drive, you know. Very easily swayed by his emotion. You make him angry, he's going to let you know. You make him sad, he's going to let you know. Uh, God forbid he's horny, because uh, he'll let you know that too. And, uh, uh, let's, let's add some color down here, you know. we don't. There we go. Make them prominent. Alright. He's looking pretty good. He's, pretty, he's having a good time. He's, he's like Spongebob. Spongebob, I had another aneurysm while I was sleeping. I don't remember who I am. I don't remember who I am. And uh, this is a daily thing that Spongebob has to deal with. I mean, he's constantly having uh, just aneurysms, uh, brain leakage coming out of his little ear holes. Uh, it doesn't help that Patrick is constantly hitting his head on everything on a daily basis. The brain damage is immense. Uh, he actually just recently had the top part of his skull reattached because they had to they had to go in there with an ice cream scooper scoop out the tumors and it was uh, easily a ratio of uh, 90 to 10 90 percent tumors 10 percent brain matter so you know the doctors aren't too sure how much longer he's gonna have but I think for as long as he's around he's gonna bring smiles and joy to everyone who watches him so Godspeed Patrick Starr and we'll miss you when uh, that debilitating tumor in your head finally eats away at the rest of your your brain juice there. But uh, yeah, it's Patrick Starr. Let's get Squidward in here, though. I feel like Squidward needs to join the cast. He uh, really focuses on the main three there. You know, A lot of the episodes are always focused on SpongeBob, Patrick, and poor Squidward having to deal with their torrential waves of idiocy, and uh, Squidward just constantly getting annoyed at their, their completely idiotic plans and annoying sounds they make so Squidward's always kind of got a frown going on of course we gotta draw that glorious nose I mean if there's one thing he's known for it's it's having that absolutely just gorgeous nose I mean if we want to talk about modeling well, I tell ya that's uh you're looking at it. of course we gotta give him those eyes he's kind of got a sneer going on you know he's He's always on the lookout for Spongebob and Patrick, like, always oh, just a bit weary of what they're doing. There we go. Alright, of course, he's a squid, so he's got a lot of appendages. Uh, we gotta give him his body, though. So let's, uh, here we go. And he's always got that classic brown shirt on, so of course we'll be giving him that. And now for any of you who, uh, aspire to dress like Squidward. Uh, he actually got that shirt at The Gap for $12.99 on sale. He bought, bought them in bulk. He bought like 20 of them. Uh, so check them out. I bet you can find one there. We gotta draw his, his little <laughs> his little appendages. We'll draw the basic two right here. Then one, one. Kinda got another one right here. Another one right here. There we go. And then he's like, he's pretty sassy. He's like, what are you doing? Come on. You can't be doing that. And now we, uh, we of course gotta give him his, his classic, just, what the hell are you fucking doing, SpongeBob? You're pissing me off. You can't fucking be doing that. It's my yard. Now, Squidward doesn't necessarily swear in the show, but I think we can... We could probably make the safe assumption that Squidward does indeed swear a lot. Uh, it's really the only way he can vent, uh, because if he were to use physical violence against Spongebob and Patrick, that would result in him not only being terminated from the Krusty Krab, but doing some community service. And Squidward is not one to resort to violence, necessarily. You know, he's going to try talking things out when he can. He's going to fume. He's going to be passive-aggressive about it. But, uh... He's, uh, he at least has uh, the control to uh, prevent him from going too ham on him. Although this time, uh, he is considering going ham on the boys. He is holding a mallet. Uh, he is threatening to beat them, unfortunately. Uh, he already clobbered uh, Patrick in the temple when 
when he walked by because he was just so angry because uh, he caught Patrick actually, believe it or not, uh, doing a little wanky wank out in the shed behind Squidward's uh, Squidward's house, you know. Squidward's brand new shed had a brand new lawnmower in there. Unfortunately, when we went out there on a nice crisp Sunday morning to mow his lawn, uh, Patrick was in there shooting his mayo all over the shed and uh, copious amounts of it. Super thick, super kind of an off yellow. And you know, Squidward, he just couldn't contain himself. He was so furious. He just, he had to teach him a lesson. And frankly, yeah, I'm on Squidward's side on this one, you know? There we go. Look at that. There's Squidward. SpongeBob, if you don't kick Patrick under control, I'm gonna cut off his willy and feed it to ya. He's kinda got a C here. Yeah, kinda, kinda look going on. Uh, there's Squidward. Classic Squidward. Uh, he's kinda, he's kinda got a brow, his brow raised. He's just like, you don't think I'll fucking do it? Oh, I'll do it. I'll kill both of ya. So hopefully Squidward can get himself under control and calm down. Uh, cause, unfortunately, murder, you know, it's gonna carry a pretty pretty high penalty with it, but, you know, I'm rooting for you, Squidward. Definitely rooting for you. Look at those pearly whites. Always takes care of his smile, you know? He doesn't smile often, but when he does, you can't help but smile with him, let me tell you. Let's, uh, let's get Sandy Cheeks in here. Let's get Sandy's, Sandy Cheekums in here. Now, fortunately, I'm not, not great at drawing a squirrel, but, uh, you know, I'll try drawing a quick little squirrel here. Kind of looking like a rat, so don't exactly know how well this is going to come off as a squirrel. Not well, by the looks of it. Sandy's a smart one. You know, stark contrast uh, to Patrick. You know, Sandy's got a good head on her shoulders. And uh, surprisingly, she isn't nuts. See what I did there? Did you see what I did? I said she wasn't nuts because she, uh, she's a squirrel. For anyone that laughed at that, uh, you, sir, have a great sense of humor. So thank you. There we go. We gotta get, yeah, I gotta get those eyes. Okay, well, you know what? Yeah, let's rock with that. She's kind of a cyclops today, you know. There we go. One-eyed Sandy. That's what uh, that's what everyone knows her for. You know, her her famous one eye. She's a cycloptic squirrel. Uh, you know, the only one of her kind. She's uh, she always has her helmet on. So let's draw the base of the helmet here. Protect her from the uh, from the water pressure and the the uh, lack of oxygen down at the ocean floor. There we go. Sandy's looking pretty good. Give him some whiskers. And uh, we do have to draw a squirrel. Uh, we don't have to draw necessarily a realistic squirrel body. We'll we'll put her in her little suit, her little underwater suit. Look at that. Now, I don't know what's going on right here. Um, you know what? I'm going to say there was admittedly a little hole in her suit, and the water did get in. Uh, unfortunately, her body is swelling and caving in due to the pressure. Uh, it is only a matter of time until all of her arteries rupture and explode simultaneously. Uh, I do fear for the bloody, bloody outcome that will cause, but uh, she knew the risk try living down at the bottom of the ocean, so... Can't feel too bad for her. She did know the risks. There's her gloves. We'll just give her kind of one finger on that hand. There we go, Cycloptic Sandy. Uh, and you know what? We'll actually just say that uh, you know her other eye is free floating in her helmet because of the pressure. Uh, it did explode out of her skull. So, you know. She's, uh, she's kind of screaming in pain right now because uh, <laughs> her whole body's just twisting, contorting, and bending in horrible, horrible ways and, and uh, patterns that a human body just simply should not bend, or I should say a squirrel body in this case. Uh, and this is the end for Sandy. She will die and she will not appear in future episodes or seasons. So this is the last we saw of her. This is canon. Feel free to ask the, uh, the show writers that. This is how Sandy ends, though. This is the 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 uh, the final destination for Sandy Cheekums. Rip, rip. I think that's gonna have to do it. I think the death of Cycloptic Sandy is gonna be where we end, ending on a high note, on a cheery note. Thank you for watching, and uh, if you enjoyed, you know, 
feel free to stick around for the next episode. Uh, I like doing these shitty little doodles, these little, these little crappy, crappy little drawings, you know. If, if you're coming here for, for, for highly polished drawings and, and uh, you know, the artistic fervor you would expect from a, from a mainstream artist, I unfortunately am not going to be able to provide that. Uh, <laughs> uh, these are these are pretty crude. This is what you would expect your third grader to throw out at you if you uh, said, "Hey, write your favorite cartoon character." Uh, and arguably, they could probably write, uh, draw something a little better. But uh, you know what? These give you a little chuckle. If these give you a little laugh, that's all that matters. That's all I'm going for. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. So bye bye. Uh, thanks for watching. It uh, always means a lot to me for anyone that sticks around until the end and uh, you can't go anywhere until I give you a recommendation on something to watch. And uh, you know, keeping in line with the SpongeBob content I brought to you with this episode, I you know, I saw this not too long ago on TV and I I just had to tell people. It's it's life-changing, very emotional journey. And uh, it's actually a interesting crossover between NBC Dateline and Nickelodeon. And the uh, it's kind of a a documentary slash dramedy, and it is a uh, Patrick Star versus a gun, and uh, <laughs> and it's you know cont uh, context. Uh, it is it is Patrick Star staring down the barrel of a loaded gun, and uh, <laughs> it's kind of a of an inner dialogue, an inner monologue as Patrick kind of mills through his thoughts, feelings, and emotions in the moment, uh, kind of processing you know what's going on, what's happening. I'm facing a loaded gun. Am I ready to die? It's uh, a very, very deep, and it explores kind of uh, how the human mind defines existentialism. Only uh, instead of a human, it's Patrick Starr staring at the barrel of a loaded, <laughs> a loaded handgun. Uh, it is TVMA, so it is, uh, it is mature content. Uh, be weary if you're looking for something, uh, you know, a bit, a bit more cheerful. But hey, you know what? For those who like maybe the darker, grim macabre seriousness of Dateline, but yet they want to find something that's uh, full of levity and comedy that you can find only in Nickelodeon cartoons. This is perfect for you. Perfect combo. Patrick Starr versus a gun. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to re-air it. It kind of got some... <laughs> kind of kind of had some uh, some negative criticisms about it. You know, people people didn't take to the idea too well, but you know what? If you can, if you can't find it, maybe someone saved it for you in a DVR. Give it a watch and uh, let me let me let me know what you think of Patrick Star versus a gun. Bye bye.